light up for the age of speed. Ever since the first auto emerged from its garage, man has had the urge to see how fast it would go and to make it go faster than any other car in town. Early drivers hotly raced it out in fire-breathing monsters that terrorized the countryside. When things went wrong, the cry was, whoa, Nelly. But these pioneers were blazing the way to a new era, while kids on bicycles passed them by. Oh, Nelly, whoa! Soon these tests of speed moved from country roads to dirt tracks. Here is one of the first major matches to be recorded on film, the Vanderbilt Cup race of 1906. The speedway was becoming a proving ground for new motors, new fuels, new safety devices. By 1915, the cars had become smaller, faster, and far more dangerous. In the years since then, the lure of speed has driven man to race almost everywhere in almost anything, through the blinding dust of dirt tracks and on the slippery planks of giant wooden saucers. This was Altoona. Drivers have fought it out on the shifting sands of beaches. Even snow-covered mountain tracks fit only for Eskimo dogs and snowshoes have been used as race tracks. speeding on ice. The daredevils have to the tune of skidding tires and squealing brakes. Sometimes whole cities like Monte Carlo are thrown open to the racing car's roaring wheels. Racing on the flat isn't enough. Try scaling Pike's Peak. 12 twisting miles with 147 hairpin curves and a sheer drop if you miss. No matter if it's made out of failing wire and tin, if it moves fast, you can race in it. Anything can happen in a stock car championship. For the midgets, midget racing alone has become America's fifth greatest spectator sport. A running start characterizes the European cross-country test. Once a year, Ireland's peace and quiet is broken by these wailing banshees. Some of the cars burn up the road, and some just burn up. This race is run in so many directions at once that even the cameraman gets confused. No matter where they race, in what kind of car, death always rides with the driver. important of the world's auto races is the Indianapolis 500 mile classic. Here are highlights of the Memorial Day spectacle which draws more fans than any other American sporting event. In 
1921, a large field zoomed off on the concrete speedway while cameramen hand cranked away. Tommy Milton won the purse of 35,000. 1929, and the annual parade teed off the duel with danger. The thirsty Ray Keach was the victor. 1930 brought another battle on the fast track, used for only these few hours a year. Young Billy Arnold, 23, captured auto racing's biggest prize. 1934, features of today's sleek cars continued to be born amid the castor oil fumes and noise at Indianapolis. At the end of the 200 grueling laps, the winner was Bill Cummings. In 1936, before 150,000 spectators, a smile from Lady Luck. Meyer took his third crown. By 1939, the 500-mile classic had reached its 27th running. Wilbur Shaw came home safely in front and was mighty relieved. 1940, once more, flashing racers take off the distance from Cleveland to New York. Wilbur Shaw won again. In 1946, after a wartime lapse of four years, the big event was back. The champ was George Robeson. 1948 brought out a record crowd to see the record shattered. Setting a new mark of 120 miles an hour, little Maury Rose whizzed in ahead in the race of races at Indianapolis. It was the third win for Maury. Meanwhile, on sand and salt flats, a different kind of race was being run, a race against time. Year after year, great streamlined monsters pushed the speed records higher and higher. When Sid Hogdahl in 1932 traveled 180 miles an hour, the world was amazed at his incredible speed. But Major Seagrave, five years later on the same Daytona Sands, raised the mark to 203 miles an hour. In 1928, Frank Lockhart smiled confidently as he set out on his quest for a new record. Kay Don made the headlines in 1930 with his fruitless attempts to catch Seagrave's mark. Next year, Sir Malcolm Campbell succeeded where Kay Don had failed. His famous bluebird hurtled over the mile course at 246 miles an hour. In 1938, Captain Easton brought the record crashing down. On the hard-packed salt runway of Utah's Bonneville Flats, he averaged 345 miles an hour. John Cobb iced up his $100,000 Railton Special, then took off in 1947 against a brisk wind. Here on the salt flats, he reached 400 miles an hour, a mile every nine seconds. The fastest man has ever traveled on land. In the half century between this Vanderbilt Cup match and Cobb's speed record, daredevil racers have fought it out, putting new car developments to the test so that millions of motorists can travel the highways in greater safety to the ever-increasing tempo of roaring wheels.